Hi friends, Pastor Phil Hunter here. Welcome to my dining room. I'm glad you're able to join me wherever you're watching this, whenever it is uh, that you, you found time to, to click over here. I'm glad. Uh, grace and peace are yours through Jesus. And if there's any way that Citrus Grove Lutheran Church and Wesley Chapel can help connect you with Jesus, keep you walking closer to Jesus, growing healthier in your heart, that's what Jesus does for you. And that's what we're here to, to facilitate, him doing that and then uh, causing you to be productive and fruitful. That's, uh, that's what we're all about. Well, this, this weekend, we're, we're looking at a, a miraculous uh, accomplishment that God does so many times. That's what we're, we're looking at. God doing something outside of, of what uh, typically happens, the humdrum of a day-to-day -day kind of routine. God interrupts that. And I hope he does that for you, too, uh, both in causing you to reflect on, on what he says, hopefully it moves you to repent of the things you've done wrong, to look to him for forgiveness. That, that busts up the monotony of your day-to-day -day life or of your regular uh, workday routine. Uh, to, to pause, reflect, and apologize, and confess, and to know that you're forgiven through Jesus your Savior. That's the, the only way you can, can be absolved and forgiven, and the, the slate is wiped completely clean. That's just what he does. Um, it's also uh, important for us to look back on what Jesus did and, and said and the promises God made and kept in the Bible so that we learn those and know those better, learn more about the God that we're, we're worshiping, and so that we can look ahead and see, see what's going to happen. Who is this God that's going to, to come back to this world and, and, and rescue us and bring us to be with him forever. We want to know him as well as we can. And we get to know each other too. So before we dive into today's uh, Bible reading and sermon, let's, let's uh, talk just for a minute about that. Citrus Grove Church for these last several months has been in a state of getting ready and preparing and uh, getting ready to roll out the red carpet for, for guests in our neighborhood, family and friends who live nearby. We're going to invite them all uh, for the first time, kind of for uh, a grand opening service. Our, we're calling it a launch weekend or a grand opening, call it whatever you want. For regulars, it's gonna feel a lot like a regular church service. We're not gonna do anything crazy or weird. We are who we are. And so we're gonna invite the neighborhood to come and see who we are, uh, observe a worship service, uh, see if this is something that they see as important for them too, to grow healthier inside, to have more fruitful life. Uh, we think it is. It's something that's good for everybody in Wesley Chapel and Zephyr Hills and Pasco County. Uh, so we're going to invite everyone. Uh, we have flyers. We have invitations. We'll have links that you can send out. Uh, send an email if you aren't part of our, our, of our weekly mailing list because th that is full of, of good information and, and um, other resources for you. Uh, that same weekend, uh, so I was talking about the grand opening on December 5th. The day before that, this coming Saturday, December uh, uh, fourth is is a, our family Christmas fair. So volunteers are getting ready to, to host different stations around Pinecrest that Saturday morning from 9 to 11. It'll be a wonderful time where families, parents or grandparents, caretakers together with their kids can move from station to station and at each point be taught and reminded about what Christmas is and what it's for and what it really started as and what we continue to celebrate it as. I hope that a family that moves through these various stations, whether it's um, learning, learning about Christmas tree and its symbolism or hearing the Bible stories or, or singing some of the famous old classic Christmas carols, I hope that they walk away saying, wow, that is a church that really cares about us teaching our kids about Jesus. That's what they're all about. And I would love nothing more than that. We are not about gimmicks and, and um, baiting and switching people or, or drawing people in for, for big, crazy things. We're about simple, basic things. Parents and kids talking about Jesus in their home. What is more important than that? So thank you to those volunteers who are planning to be there. Uh, already know your station. If you don't, send me a message and we'll get you connected to a, a spot that fits your gifts and uh, really can make an impact for some of our, our neighbors and guests that we're inviting this, this week into that family Christmas fair. Of course, Christmas services on the 24th at Pinecrest, 4 p.m. That will be a fun time too. Um, it'll, it'll be a, a kind of an evening there, four, four o'clock service. We're mailing out invitations to all sorts of, uh, I think 10,000 people around our area. So that Christmas Eve service will be a fun, and uh, enjoyable and memorable and Jesus-focused time. Uh, 
uh, we'll, we'll especially look at the plan that God the Father had to send his son into the world and how that, that takes everything off of your plate. Uh, God is working for you behind the scenes before you even could lift a finger. Uh, what, a, what a blessing. Well, uh, that's the month of December ahead. As you can tell, it's a busy and important uh, month for the life of our congregation. We're going to say a prayer at the end of the service and we'll include a, uh, of this video and we'll include a, a prayer for this upcoming month too. And I'd appreciate you praying for all those invitations going out and the invitations that members are, are sending and handing out to their neighbors. Who knows how God might use uh, the people who come to that Christmas fair, the family event, or, or come to our launch, if they may, may stick around and become members. If uh, someone who hears about our Christmas service and is just new to the area is able to find out about us and and uh, keep hearing about Jesus through us, there's nothing better than that. Well, uh, let's, let's look at our, our Bible reading for, for this week. We're continuing our march through Luke. We're still in chapter one, and uh, today we're talking about what sounds like an impossible situation. Have you ever been in an impossible situation? You're probably gonna say, oh yeah. Uh, I was stuck, I was at wit's end, I, I had no options, it was impossible. The reality is, no, you weren't. It seemed like it was. Uh, you couldn't think out of, uh, of any ways out, but hmm, precious few things in this universe are actually impossible, especially for Christians like you, because you know someone who has a track record of taking impossible situations and with a snap of his fingers, a, a word from his mouth, the impossible happens. Things you would never have expected could, could, could take place, happened. Uh, and it proves to us, maybe some of these things are possible after all. So today I want you to engage with that, the, the tension that you faced constantly, this matchup between uh, two opposing truths. One side says, this is an impossible situation. And the other one says, actually it's not. Impossible, possible. Welcome to this, this tension. This is what your, your life <laughs> consists of all the time. Uh, today, our tour guide through thinking about that is an angel. Uh, name of Gabriel talking to a woman in northern Israel. Listen back and imagine the sights and sounds of that day. Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will, be, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come, come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Impossible meet reality. Turns out God could let Elizabeth, that you mentioned here in a, a couple of times, uh, God let her have a baby, despite old age and, for, and infertility. Everyone on earth would have said, impossible. And God says, well, normally, yeah but not if I make an exception. Mary politely asks the angel how a virgin can have a baby. On the one hand, it's impossible. On the other hand, you're saying it's going to happen. And the angel gives an explanation and then a promise and then a signal to her that it's true. The explanation is God's going to do what only he can do. The power of his presence and the cloud of his shadow, uh, the, the, the shadow of his cloud and his presence in front of his people have always been impressive and miraculous. And uh, he's going to do that same kind of thing again, where his very presence is going to bring things into existence that normally could not be created. He can do it. He'll do a miracle and Mary, then you'll be pregnant. 
That's the explanation. The promise for her is that this miracle baby will be God's son. Not just human, but human and God at the same time. And he'll be David's heir, so he'll be royal. Jacob's descendant from this line, uh, line that God had kept, uh, made and kept promises to. Uh, entirely human, but just as much God as his father as well. And the signal that all of this is true, well, well, there are two. One is always just wait and see. That's always an option for people who need more signals. It's not necessarily the best way of taking God at his word, but if everybody just waits and see, eventually you'll see God was telling the truth. Uh, the other, uh, the, the signal that the angel gives to Mary is, well, go visit your relative, this um, cousin or whatever, this elderly relative, Elizabeth. Go visit her and take her some onesies for her baby shower. And as likely as it sounds, that's what's happening. Nobody else in the world knows this. Elizabeth and Zechariah are going to have a baby. The angel also at the very end relays one final message for ringing in Mary's ears for her whole life and is still ringing out tonight, uh, today, whenever it is that you're, that, that you're watching, watching this. That these words are still ringing out. No word from God will ever fail. The impossible can happen. So look, Jesus frequently warned his followers not to be gullible. He encourages you to be shrewd, careful, not to build your trust on shaky foundations. So you're smart to stay skeptical in a lot of situations. Stay skeptical of telemarketers and used car salesmen and your cousin Joe's investment advice. You're also smart if you stay skeptical of yourself in many ways. Have you ever watched a magician and then realized your eyes were just tricked? How else am I being tricked? <laughs> Stay skeptical uh, because have you ever trusted, uh, trusted someone? Really thought you could trust this person and then they tricked you or they just let you down. And you had trusted your gut that this person was reliable and your gut proved to be wrong. Hmm, maybe I'm not as good a judge of character as I thought I was. Doubt yourself even, even as you grow weaker in, as the years go on. I, you know, you used to be able to trust in your own strength and now you can't as much. So, so maybe it's good to hedge, good to be a little skeptical even of yourself, of your own skills and abilities and senses. Keep your shields up in a lot of ways. Stay skeptical in a lot of ways of everyone, even of yourself. But there's one person who will not trick you or lie to you. In fact, that's the one thing God cannot do. He can't go against his words. Stay skeptical of the word impossible when God is at work. Here's an easy example. You might have said, uh, if you were part of our, our core group, um, the writing is on the wall for Emmanuel. There's just no way this church will keep going. And, you know, they talk about starting a new mission in Wesley Chapel, but I just don't think that's going to get off the ground. It's, it's too expensive, too much work, not enough of us in the group to make it happen. And there are already so many other churches out there. Well, well, was it impossible? Because by God's grace and with the unbelievable support of Christians across our country, we're going to launch a new church next week. It's the official start of a new congregation that's eager to talk about God's truth and to offer his peace to this beautiful, booming part of our country and intending to last for generations to come, should the Lord will it. It's not impossible. It may have seemed, but it's not. And think about yourself personally. When have you found yourself saying, I'm in an impossible spot? Was it a matter of paying bills? And yet, somehow, you're here. You're on the other side of that. Was it a relationship that went south and you're just, it was impossible. Tough as that was, you're still walking in your most important relationship with Jesus. Was it an impossibly huge amount of work on your plate you just could not get done? By God's grace, in time, it's done. And what needed to get done got done. I want to point out the impossibly, pull, uh, impossibly strong pull of temptations. You might say, it's impossible. I cannot stop worrying. 
or lusting or coveting or swearing, gossiping, whatever. You say, that pull on my heart, it's just impossible. I have to do that. I can't say no. Well, first of all, train yourself not to give in so easily. That is a lie that the devil tells you and you're just buying into it if you say it's impossible for me. There is nothing that the devil likes more than a Christian who just throws up his or her hands and acts helpless. When you have an all-powerful warrior God standing beside you, legions of angels that he sends to fight for you, uh, you can say it's tough and you can acknowledge that you'll have a sinful nature your whole life. But don't jump straight to it's impossible, not when God is at work. Here are two helpful passages. First is Titus chapter 2. Paul reminds Titus that the, the grace of God that Jesus showered on you not only saves you from your sins so you go to heaven someday. That same grace, the verse says, teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled and upright and godly lives in this present age. In this present age, not just in heaven, now. So Jesus' miracle working power isn't just for someday, it's for every day. But it's a, it's a teaching, the verse says. He teaches you. It's a learning process with its ups and downs and traps and stumbles and, and constant forgiveness from him. But, but it's full of peace all the way because Jesus, your Savior, is the one teaching you. So don't say it's impossible, not if God is at work. The other passage is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It's a famous verse with a less famous second half. It starts out saying, God is faithful. He won't let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But it goes on. When you are tempted, he will also provide the way out so that you can endure it. If you've been tempted to what you would consider your, your limit, you'll find yourself saying, I'm in an impossible situation here. And maybe you are. But if you listen carefully, you heard that God promised to let you bear that test and temptation and to endure it. He'll give you the strength to deal with it. Not necessarily escape on your terms. Not necessarily let it pass as fast as you'd like. He'll help you bear it. He'll allow you to endure it so that it's not impossible for you. You can make it through. Uh, you might face incredible challenges and a super strong temptation or a very difficult burden as long as you walk on this earth. Jesus isn't preventing all of that. You may face those things. But here his promise is to make you be able to bear and endure it and endure an otherwise impossible burden without him. People close to you might even be shocked how you're able to have such peace like you do or or, or be so loving and caring for, for people, even though it's so exhausting. Or, or how you just keep putting one foot in front of another if it's just been a string of bad news. When you have, when, when you have uh, so many things in front of you and you have to face, uh, uh, face the reality of the difficulties in front of you, well, then you can paraphrase that angel and say this. God makes... The impossible possible. I guess that's how I'm making it through. God's allowing an otherwise impossible situation to be possible. Ultimately, God will do a miracle and will bring you out of that impossible, difficult bind. And in heaven, he'll give you freedom and health, or whatever you never got to have here in heaven. Not have, have here on earth, you'll have it in heaven. Friends, one final encouragement today. After doing a miracle in the Bible, God rarely stopped to tell his people, look, I just did a miracle right there. He didn't need to say those words because they already got it. They had their jaws on the ground. They were shocked at what they had just seen. They knew it was something impossible and their minds were still being blown. You too, you're not going to get the voice of, uh, of uh, you know, an announcer out of the sky saying, see that right there? That was a miracle. See what I just did? You remember how you thought you were in an impossible spot and I just did a miracle and helped you out of it, helped you handle it. You're just glad to be done with it in that moment. Hopefully you say thank you to the Lord for, for getting you through. Look, God might do impossible seeming things by suspending the way he normally has things operate in the world, whether, whether medicine or physics or whatever. He can just pause things that we perceive as laws. He's the creator. All of those laws of nature have to give way to nature's creator. 
If he wants to change them for a minute, they have to bend to his will. Though, of course, you might go your whole life without ever seeing anything like that. And that's fine. No one else needs to have a virgin birth because God worked the right miracle at the right time there with Mary. But you have seen miracles, even if you've never seen uh, God suspend the laws of nature or physics or whatever. You've seen miracles, by which I mean you have witnessed God make the seemingly impossible possible. God works in a hard heart or a guilty conscience or a doubt-filled mind, and he's able to create faith, strengthen the trust in him, using nothing but a simple message of Jesus. That's a miracle. God can take ordinary water and some words, and he washes away sin. He gives new life and salvation, and he brings even babies into his kingdom. Here at his supper, when you have the, the, uh, the Lord's Supper, uh, bread and wine give you impossibly more, greater, better blessings than carbs and calories because he promises that they are Jesus' body and blood, and they are, and nothing's impossible, even if it seems like it should be when God is the one at work. Every Christian believes in miracles. We depend on miracles having happened in the past, and we're banking on miracles happening in the future, the greatest of which is Jesus rising from the dead and you rising from the dead too. This is a, a huge miracle. Everyone would agree. We'd all agree. That's impossible. But it is with God. It can happen, and it will happen. And now, you could just wait and see, or you can trust his word that when he says something is possible and going to happen, it really will. The miracle of Christmas is not a fat man squeezing down a chimney in time to bring gifts to all the children. The miracle of the first Christmas was a God who arranged all the impossible pieces just so, so that your Savior would be born in just the right way. The miracle of today is that he keeps walking with you. That same Savior and he fills you with peace that he has done everything you needed him to do and that he will and that he can bring you out of all life's impossible situations because they're not at all impossible for him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for redeeming us, being born at just the perfect time in just the perfect way, even though it seemed so impossible. Give us hearts like, uh, like Mary's and Elizabeth to, to trust that you can do what you say, even if it sounds unlikely or unreasonable to our minds. We praise you for uh, the, the glorious way you, you've acted on behalf of your people, and we ask for you to continue to intervene with miracles at times, to, to do uh, whatever your good will is for each one of us. Uh, make us confident that the, the everyday miracles that we see, including of uh, conversion to, to faith in, in Jesus, and and baptism, and the Lord's Supper, that those are, are miracles in, in their own right, that you can work through them, and uh, you do accomplish great things through simple means. Uh, be with our congregation as we launch next weekend. Bless those invitations and those inviting their, their friends to those upcoming services, the family, kids fair, the Christmas fair, and then uh, to our launch Sunday, and then to Christmas Eve. Uh, invite invite people and allow people to, to receive those invitations and come and, and join us. Come and worship the newborn king. Give us a, a hospitable and welcoming atmosphere and all the right words uh, to lead people to you so that they grow healthier in their heart and more fruitful in their lives. We pray all these things in your eternal name, our Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Take care. Look forward to talking with you again next time. God bless.